welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be doing a review of Stephen King, Gerald's Game, the movie adaption versus the book. So I'm going to review the movie and the book and then have my final thoughts at the end and say which one I prefer better and all that good stuff. So let's get into it. So I think I'll go into the plot first. Um, if you don't want spoilers, probably don't watch this video. But essentially in this book, um, Jesse and Gerald have been married for a very long time. Gerald is a lawyer and Jesse stays at home. So Gerald takes Jesse to this like lakeside cabin and is like we're having a romantic getaway and turns it into a sex game. But in this sex game, Jesse is tied to the bed with like the metal handcuffs and something happens with Gerald, we'll get into it, um, and Gerald takes a heart attack and Jesse ends up tied to the bed. She has to try to find a way to escape. There's a stray dog, Prince, who's coming in and eating Gerald and if she doesn't escape, we'll eat her too. And there's also the Moonlight Man, who is a grave robber slash serial killer that is around the area and has stumbled and found Jess on this bed. Um, so Jess has to try and find her way out. So that's just a general kind of plot before you go into I think I want to go into the film first just because I've got more points about the film and I think it will explain the kind of plot and ideas a little bit better and then I'll go into the book. So the screenplay was by Mike Flanagan who I believe is an American director and then again Mike Flanagan directed it. So plot and structure. <sighs> this is a hard book to put on screen and I have to give it to you know my planning in for attempting to do it. It's a really hard book to bring to the screen. All the stuff that goes on is in Jesse's head and the main narrative and the way the narrative is told is through these voices um, that Jesse herself attaches, you know, people from her life to. And, you know, so you've got Ruth, um, who was an old friend of hers in, I believe, college. Um, and she takes on kind of the voice of the sort of realist kind of cold bitch almost in a way and then you've got the good wife goody um who sort of takes on again this kind of idea like sort of role kind of voice of this sort of you know idolized housewife and this kind of idolized version of kind of femininity and um and then you've got the ufo voices your kind of stranger sort of voices in her head so again the story is told through jesse but through the voices of jesse um which is a really hard story to put on screen and you've also got to remember the limits of a movie is, you know, I believe the movie is about two hours. I might be wrong about that. But again, you've got, in comparison, how much you have in a book and, you know, how much time you have to tell a story in a movie. It's very hard to kind of jump and to do that. So I have to give it to them for, you know, trying and making a, a fairly good movie out of it. But in saying that, the way in which the narrative is told, kind of, it didn't annoy me as such, but I think when you take the power of the voice away from the protagonist and you kind of put it through Gerald. I don't know why, but I was kind of like, I don't know if I like that. Purely because, you know, in the book, you know, you're giving a voice to a victim of abuse and how she's dealt with it. And I feel like just giving that, you know, voice to Gerald kind of took Jesse's role away a little bit. Um, but again, how else do you tell a story? when you know an action goes through the protagonist's head so i think the way in which the story told was a good idea but it just took away from jesse's power in the narrative and saying that the actual pacing of the film and the kind of moments where the flashbacks were put in it worked well um and i think you know this especially um the introduction to kind of the dream sequence um is really good and I think if you hadn't read the novel maybe it wouldn't then you know annoy you as much you know the art of being kind of told through Gerald um but again I have to give it some the pacing and kind of timing was good um and you still got you know the kind of the things that were important basically were in the film um the only Here's another thing that annoyed me. Um, in the film, basically, the way that Gerald dies is Jesse gets really fed up being in the handcuffs and Gerald basically goes to rape her. Um, and in the book, there is that real moment of horror when Jesse realised what's happening, that Gerald just doesn't care and is going to have sex with her and she doesn't want it. Um, and again, that came to me in the movie. So that there was that real moment where your heart was in your mouth, like, oh my, he doesn't care. Like, he doesn't care that he's going to rape his wife. Um, but in the book, she knees him. Um, she hits him really hard 
with her foot on his chest and I feel like that's a really powerful moment and I feel like that's a really powerful image and that idea that Jessie is literally kicking her way out of this situation and you know it's a kick to the balls to someone who's attempting to rape her um and in the film Jessie bites her lip his lip and that's what sets off and I don't know why but I just wish that was included in the film I just think the kind of magnitude of that moment because it's what sets off this whole entire journey for Jesse is the moment she decides no this isn't happening and I think I just wish that had been included in the film um the acting however I enjoyed the acting I thought the acting was well done I think that the actors played off each other and didn't base it on like I'm gonna play sad you know they based it on what they were doing to each other to get a reaction and I think Again, they're both very experienced actors and I think that really showed through and the acting was superb and the directing of that to get that performance was superb. And I also think the relationships between, you know, the alter ego of um, Gerald and Jesse's alter ego, fantastic. They played off each other so well and, you know, the just the interactions between them two alter egos were brilliant and the depth um, of their kind of, interactions I enjoyed I enjoyed it um the Moonlight Man scared me scared me um he freaked me out and again his place in the story and the way he was introduced fantastic because it sets Jesse up as this unreliable narrator and you know in the book you maybe don't get that as much I have to say I think in the film where the moment where Jesse looks in the corner and it's kind of is he there is he not is really unsettling and I think but that's just on a visual point it's always more unsettling to see something like that than to read about it I think um and that was done fantastically well the one kind of moment um that I wish was I feel like it sounds like I'm going to rewrite this whole film I'm not I think it was well on film um the moment that I wish had a little bit more emphasis on it was the moment where Jessie's father sticks up for her and her mother um, is like, fine, she stays with you when her mother decides to go on the boat that leaves Jessie with her father during a solar eclipse when she is abused by him. In the book, that moment has a lot more meat to it and it's not, it looks like I'm like orchestrating a choir. Um, it's a lot more meat to it and I think... It just, it shows how much more difficult it was for Jessie in the sense that she had this really fractured relationship with her mum and she looked up to her dad so much that, you know, he, she admired him and wanted to be his best friend and she loved him. And I think the horror of that moment um, came through well in the movie, but more so in the book and that moment, you know, it really shows you why Jessie felt she couldn't say anything. And again, in both of these, in both the film and the novel, I think it gave a real voice to victims and, you know, and the way in which people manipulate victims and how, as a society, you know, we can try and create an atmosphere where victims can come forward and don't feel ashamed and guilty and dirty and all these kind of associations. So, and it was good in that way. The one thing I will say about this film, the cinematography. Oh! Oh, it was gorgeous. It was fantastic. At the start, the real bright saturation of like blues and greens and yellows and the soundscape of the birds in the background. And that was fantastic. And I think it set up the start of the film versus the horror of what was to come fantastically. Um, the Moonlight Man again. Um, the kind of shot and the way it was shot and the angle, you know, in which it was done. Again, really fantastic. Um, the eclipse scenes, beautifully, beautifully done. Um, you know, the colours and the saturation and, you know, an angle and the wide shot versus the close-up shots of, you know, Jesse's face. Beautiful. Um, and just really heartbreaking. From a cinematic visual standpoint, I think probably one of my favourite images in the whole film is when it's just solar eclipse. And Jessie stands in red and she goes in and sees a younger version of herself with the handcuffs um, around her. I just think it's such a visual representation of how trapped Jessie has felt in her life since that moment. Um, 
it's just such a visual kind of cue and a visual moment that's just really like got you. So just for you little like after things, special effects. Some of the special effects in the film, I just was kind of like, eh, eh. I can't tell how much was done by CGI and how much was done by actual prosthetics. Um, the Moonlight Man I thought was brilliantly done, so I'm not entirely sure how or kind of what way that was done. But the moment where the dog rips, where Prince like rips the meat out of Gerald's arm, and like the way it was done, it, and the wind itself to me just looked a little bit too CGI. So I don't know how much was practical and how much was CGI. Um, and the moment where Jess kind of rips her hand out of the handcuff was very good, um, and it was really like, oh, Mikey. Um, so don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the special effects were awful throughout, I just think in certain points I kind of just assume with the budget that was given that the special effects could have been better. So final thoughts, um, it's a well acted, it's a well directed film, um, but I just feel like the meat of the story that's in the King, like in King's novel just isn't present like in the film and in some areas it feels quite like rushed and it just doesn't allow that kind of same exploration that the novel allows. The ending of the film, like within the actual context of the film and what it chose to put in, is a really gorgeous ending and um, I really kind of, it sticks with you that ending, um, so for that, but if you do really love King's, like King's novel and you love the way it ends, I do think, you know, you will be slightly disappointed because it just doesn't lack, you know, it just lacks the depth that the ending has in the book. Um, but yeah, it, it, the film itself definitely deserves credit for trying to bring it to the screen. So I want to go into the book a little bit um, and just talk about like, what I liked about it and stuff like that. So the first thing I will say is I much preferred the book over the, no, um, the film. But again, that's because the book has so much more depth to it and, you know, is so much more of a kind of storytelling quality. But again, I keep saying this. <laughs> You ha it's two different mediums and trying to kind of take a book to a film is a very difficult thing to do. Um, I think just within the medium of a novel, it just gives so much more time to explore Jessie and what she's been through and her character. It, just, it gives that time to explore all that and to really kind of get themes across that you don't get in a film. I think as well, the pacing of the novel, in a way that the film felt kind of rushed sometimes, the pacing of the novel, it gives you that real claustrophobic feeling because you're, you know, you're following these horror-filled moments for Jesse. You know, the first time the Moonlight Man appears, her seeing Prince take a chunk out of Gerald. Um, you know, the moment where she goes into the dream and there's a woman, you know, this woman hanging over the well and stuff. You know, you really you're with her in that moment of horror. And the way it's paced is you can feel the slowness of time and you can feel how slow it must be to be chained, knowing that if you don't get out of this, you're going to die. So I think the pacing of the novel works fantastically. The flashbacks can be a little, a little bit confusing, not going to lie. But again, any novel I find that's got a lot of like flashbacks or even plays that have a lot of flashbacks can be hard to follow. So I think just take your time when you're reading it. Um, but again, the flashbacks give even more of kind of an idea of what Jessie was like and how she was um, and how the incident affected her. Um, you know, in the novel, it doesn't show when she went to college and that's when she, she met Ruth and Ruth, you know, had a big impact on her life and ended up being one of the voices that helps her through the situation. The film can't get that in because it doesn't have the time. Um, you know, so again, and even at the end, um, at the end of the film, um, basically, Jessie writes to her younger self um, as a younger self that helps her get out of the situation. But in the book, she writes this massive long letter to Ruth at the end. And it almost felt a little bit of a disservice to Ruth to not do that, but then also you didn't have the time to go into who Ruth was, so or even a good wife, you know. So I'll give it that. It's just to control the narrative that's given to Jessie, the main protagonist, you know. We see everything through her eyes and how it affected her and how she feels about it and the way in which it's affected her life. You know, we see that through her. And I think, you know, it's such a powerful thing to give that voice to a victim. Um of someone who's experienced such a horrible thing that happened at such a young age and again that's just from a female perspective I guess a female re a female perspective reading the novel um some of it felt slightly sensationalized I will also say that that some of it I was I did feel uncomfortable reading because I was like oh you know when it talks about you know Jesse's father touching her and a shiver goes up her um but then I'm also 
you know, it's innocence, it's an innocent, you know, there's not an fragility, and I think it just kind of, again, reinforces, like, the horror of, like, you know, she's young, and she's innocent, and she loves her dad, and she looks up to her dad, and have that happen to her, and I think almost it, that kind of idea plays against each other, and, you know, makes it kind of even more heartbreaking, so in one way, it made me squeamish and uncomfortable, but then on the other hand, I think that's kind of what it's meant to do, um, so, yeah, I'm still on the fence, but I still have mixed feelings about, like, that one. Um, in terms of characterization, I thought the characterization was great. All the voices um, in her head had real clear personalities and you're able to tell them apart quite well. You know, they carry a story to stop them getting too slowed down and, you know, risk in a good wife, the comparison of the two and the kind of juxtaposition and the way in which they play off each other was really interesting um, as two kind of T opposites of what femininity, you know, could be or should be, um, you know, in 21st century society. Um, again, I think it is just one of them things that, you know, Stephen King's voice is so prevalent in it. It's so Stephen King. And I just, all the themes that go into it and, you know, the stunning kind of, these are my notes, <laughs> um, the stunning imagery and the stunning visuals and, you know, the kind of explanation and the description of terror and horror and, you know, suspense. It's hard to recreate that in a film, I think. Um, obviously, there's some really great examples of The Shining um, and It, but in this, where the actual horror itself is in a person's head, it's very hard to bring that to the screen. So, final thoughts on the book. It's a gripping, it's a gripping story. Like, every two minutes, you're like, oh, no, and when Jesse does something right, you're like, yes, and then you see them, like, you read the Moonlight Man, you're like, no, and then, like, what, actually, this is also another thing, the point of view of Prince the dog in it was fascinating and I think the comparison of Jesse and um, Prince you know kind of having to do what they needed to do to survive you know the um, Moonlight Man does what he does out of pleasure I guess and kind of does it out of a want to do it um, whereas Prince and Jesse are having to do what they have to do to survive and I just think that's a really interesting comparison between the two of them but all in all it's a really gripping novel it's really suspenseful like you're just sitting like <laughs> again the kind of use of voices to delve into you know someone's psychology again it's a really interesting idea and I think it's done fairly well and um sometimes the late writing can seem a little bit lazy but then I also think like it's not that big a deal it's like in very few places far in between um and for what the story is and for how it's told, I can agree with that. Um, and again, just the last thing I'll say about it is, I like the references to No Exit. Um, no Exit, if you're not aware, is a French existentialist play, I believe, um, by Jean-Paul Sartre. Um, it's essentially about three people locked in hell together and the hell is being in that place together. And I think that perfectly describes the situation Jessie finds herself in. You know, she's in that living hell with these two other beings that are in intrinsically linked to her um and I think that idea of hell you know is something that will be explored for years and years and will be constantly explored in literature and film and music and all that but Stephen King definitely gives it a light to shine so yeah so I really hope you enjoyed the video um and remember to like comment subscribe all that stuff I really hope this was good and I really hope um if anyone's in our books they want me to review or films or anything please leave them down below and I will very happily so bye guys